As we sat across from each other I tried to read their faces. Nothing. Mom finally spoke. Firstly, we want to apologize. This took me by surprise and I could tell they saw it on my face. We considered what you said at the table. She continued. You were right. While we did hope that one of you would want to join us in our respective fields we never meant to put so much pressure on you that you felt that you couldn't talk to us. Exactly. As long as you are serious about it and follow through. We will always support your decisions. Mom nodded in agreement. Knowing you, I'm sure you already have a plan. Yes. Let's hear it. I told them more about the competition and summer program. Reaching into my desk drawer I pulled out all the information and paperwork. After they read through the papers and asked a few questions, they looked from each other to me. As your mother said earlier, you are a very talented pianist. We have no doubt that you will succeed. That being said, we think that you should take a couple of trade classes alongside your music courses and training. This way you'll be able to provide for yourself if anything changes. I nodded slowly. Plus I'm sure you'll want pocket money while traveling. Which you'll be able to use to bring home souvenirs for your loving mother she smiled. And your brother, Aki yelled from the other side of the door. I shook my head at his outburst. My mom chuckled. And your brother. We talked a little more. We went over other paths in the industry. Dad offered to look into available internships and temp jobs at the music department at his university. At some point Aki had finally decided to come back into the room instead of listening at the door. How do you even become a music composer? You first need a bachelor's degree in composition and songwriting. Composers also need to be familiar with music theory and understand how different instruments sound together. Aspiring composers may want to participate in choirs, concerts, band solo performances and musicals during their formative years to help them develop oral competency. We all looked at Dad. And you know this how? Aki asked. Well. When Kay was little his music teacher noticed his interest in the music she would play during break time. He'd ask her questions about which instrument made which sound. Dad tilted his head remembering. He seemed most interested in the piano. So she sat him in front of the keyboard and told him to play. Although he made mistakes she could tell he was trying to play the song they had listened to earlier. Mom took over from there. She said they had only listened to the song a few times since she had just added it to the playlist two days before. He has a very good ear for music she told us. Then she advised us on ways to nurture his talent. Kay wasn't too fond of choir or musicals. He wanted to play music not sing or act. The band idea didn't work too well either. Aki laughed then, obviously picturing what they were saying. Anyway, we asked him why he didn't like playing music with others. It was too much noise at one time. I could barely hear what I was playing. What's the point of practicing if you can hear everyone's mistakes except yours? His teacher suggested letting him learn the basics on his own, then gradually adding other instruments. This way he'd acquire the skills to recognize different sounds at the same time without it becoming overwhelming for him. We had finally found the one thing that worked. And here we are today. Dad smiled. Once my parents were done reminiscing, they got up to leave. Just before he closed the door, Aki turned back to me. This probably doesn't mean much coming from me but I'm proud of you. I can't wait to brag about my famous brother. He smiled and left. I wiped my eyes from underneath my glasses. Picking up my phone I texted him. I better be the first guest at your fancy restaurant. He sent back a smiley face. My phone buzzed with Shoyo's name on the display. I checked the time. It's not after lunch. Are you dressed? I looked down at my pajamas and t-shirt. Kind of. Good. Come open the door. You're at my house? I'm not at the store. Someone's in a bad mood. Sorry. Can you just come to the door? Magic word is? Please. Ding ding ding. I hung up the phone and went to the door. He looked me up and down. You said you were dressed. No I said kind of. May you go get dressed. Please. No smile no smirk no nothing. I'll be right back. I left him at the door and went to my room. Something is definitely wrong. I changed into jeans and a regular shirt. I grabbed my phone and went back to the door. I'm sorry. No need. He watched me tie my shoes. 45 minutes. For what? That's how long you can tell your parents you'll be out. I nodded. 
Aki came down the stairs. Can you tell mom I'll be back in 45 minutes? Sure. He peeked around me. I rolled my eyes as a smile came on his face when he saw Shoyo standing there. Have fun. I closed the door on him. Your brother? Yeah. He nodded and reached for my hand. I let him take it. That tingling feeling came back. He let out a breath. We just stood there holding hands. All better? Finally a smile appeared. All better. He started walking. Where are we going? I want you to meet some people. I stopped. What people? My people. Well that explains everything. He laughed. Seeing his smile and hearing his laugh relaxed me. It felt like I had my shoyo back. Wait, not my shoyo. Just shoyo. It'll be okay. He squeezed my hand. I'm not worried. We started walking again. After a few blocks we turned a corner. A cafe sat on the opposite side. We crossed the street and went in. Let's sit over here. He pointed a couple tables down. Right as we sat down a girl I'm assuming as his sister made her way to the table. Her smile identical to his. Natsu. This is Sukishima. Hi. I'm sorry about before. Shoyo was really worried you wouldn't believe him. I looked over at him. Most people would be embarrassed by that but he just shrugged. I'll go get mom. Okay. So this cafe belongs to your family? Yeah. That's why I said I had a family thing. Mandatory staff meeting. A guy came from the back with a couple drinks on a tray. He delivered them to a table across from us. When he saw Shoyo he smiled. That's when I noticed that even though we were sitting down. Our hands were still connected. Natsu burst through the kitchen door dragging a woman behind her. Shoyo stood as they approached us. My hand felt empty without his. I stood and reached out my hand to greet her. We made introductions. Once they were gone, Shoyo reached his hand across the table. Before I could figure out what he was reaching for, my hand met his. She's still not completely comfortable with me dating. I have to keep reminding her that I'm not a child anymore. That's understandable. My parents practically interviewed my brother's girlfriend. He smiled shaking his head. Parents. She seems nice though. She is. She'll relax once you're around more. I don't remember ever talking about being a constant presence in your life. Really. I do. We're going to have to work on that memory of yours. The guy from before reappeared with iced tea for us. His name tag read, Nori. I thanked him for the drink. He was called away by another table. After giving a knowing smile to Shoyo he went to assist them. What was that about? Shoyo shrugged and took a sip of his drink. I decided to let that one go. However, what was up with you earlier? Just work stuff. That's why I was early. I needed to see you. Why? So I could hold your hand to calm down. I had no idea what to say to that. Oh, I'm surprised you asked. It was the first time I've ever seen you upset. He smirked. Sounds like you were worried about me. Not worried just curious. Dang it. Just when I thought you cared. He smirked again. I do. Why the heck is my mouth making decisions without talking to my brain first? He looked just as surprised and confused as I felt. Then he regained his composure. Nah. Couldn't be. Before I could say anything his phone rung. He looked at the display and frowned. He twisted his mouth as he responded. Need to go? He seemed to be considering something when he looked up at me. Then the smirk reared its head.